Salam datang and welcome to ASEAN Today. I'm Ain Bandel of The Scoop in Bandar Seri Begawan. Selamat berjumpa lagi. I'm Raisa Chintami of the Indonesia Channel in Jakarta. And this is your weekly look at the dynamic Southeast Asia region. Country leaders met virtually for the 37th ASEAN Summit in Vietnam. The exit strategy to recover and come back stronger from the COVID-19 pandemic topped the agenda. Leaders also took action on a range of significant measures to overcome challenges facing the region, including the signing of a regional economic agreement after eight years of talks. Có một sự kiện rất nổi bật, như quý vị đều biết và quan tâm, đấy là hiệp định RCEP với 10 nước ASEAN và năm đối tác ASEAN để được ký kết thông qua vào sáng nay. Đây là một sự kiện quan trọng không chỉ với khối ASEAN và có thể nói có tầm quan trọng đối với thương mại toàn cầu và những cái biện pháp khác để giảm cái cái chuỗi cung đứt gãy chuỗi cung ứng để cái dòng lưu chuyển thương mại đầu tư trong nội khối ASEAN và các đối tác trong bối cảnh dịch bệnh sẽ hạn chế thấp nhất những cái thiệt hại để mà đẩy mạnh sản xuất kinh doanh giải quyết việc làm cho người dân ASEAN. The summit took place from November 12th to the 15th. At the closing ceremony, Vietnam handed over the ASEAN chairmanship to Brunei, which announced a 2021 theme of We Care, We Prepare and We Prosper. A larger summit hosted online by Malaysia brought together 21 Pacific Rim countries on November 20th. The leaders of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Meeting called for an environment that supports the further development of the digital economy, as well as inclusive economic policies to facilitate post-pandemic regional recovery and growth. Leaders also noted the need to ensure that affected workers are afforded appropriate support. We'll hear from leaders of the APEC shortly in our Hot Seat segment. Myanmar's ruling party won a sweeping victory in the country's latest general elections. State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi and her NLD party won 396 out of 476 seats in voting on November 8th. The ruling party also won 501 seats in regional parliaments and 20 ethnic minority seats. The new parliament's first regular session is expected to be held within 90 days after the commencement of the general elections. Thailand has been rocked by student-led protests for months with protesters demanding constitutional reform and changes to the monarchy. A rally was held outside Parliament on November 17th as legislators considered proposals to reform the constitution. The incident was marked by the highest number of injuries of any demonstration since a youth-led protest movement in July. On November 18th, Parliament voted to move forward with two proposals on amending the constitution, but a draft favored by the protesters was rejected despite receiving sizable public support. This draft did not rule out changes relating to the monarchy, also asking that the 250 military-appointed senators be replaced with elected officials. Heavy rains in early November caused severe and deadly floods and landslides in the Philippines. At least 17 people were killed and millions impacted after Typhoon Goni swept across the Philippines on November 1st. It was the world's strongest this year and barreled into the Philippines' main island Luzon with four landslides affecting 19 to 31 million people. And a second typhoon on November 12th continued to bring devastation across the Philippines. Vomco brought strong winds and torrential rains with 67 people reported dead and dozens missing. Floods submerged farmlands, roads and tens of thousands of houses. More than 25,000 structures were damaged with nearly $10 million worth of infrastructure destroyed. Vomco is the eighth typhoon to hit the country in the past two months and the 21st of the year. Singapore is serving up a creative way to create business and promotion for its flagship air carrier. ASEAN Today's Karina Tasha reports on the tarmac table service. Singapore Airlines began taking reservations for this on-the-ground service on October 12th. Guests could book a meal aboard the A380 from October 24th and choose meals for first class, business class or economy class. The prices range from 37 to 448 US dollars per person. The company later extended the event to four days and added dinner as more than 900 seats were sold out with 30 minutes after launching. Customers can enjoy the fine dining while watching movies on the world's largest double-deck aircraft. 
The pricing is actually very fair. I mean, it's, it, it took a lot of effort and time and work to put this experience together. It is not the standard type of restaurant experience, so they had to park the aircraft, they had to, uh, you know, there's a lot of processes involved. It's not what they typically do when they fly. Customers dining on this aircraft must register with passports and pass a security check before boarding. I am very, actually very honored to be here today to help out with the Restaurant 380 because I think it's something that everybody is looking forward to. We are also very excited about it because I think it's a way we can help to promote a different kind of concept to the rest of the people that cannot fly. Due to social distancing requirements, only half of the seats in the cabin were open and each group of guests were limited to five. The cabin is thoroughly cleaned and disinfected before and after each meal. The passenger plane is also equipped with a high-efficiency particulate air filter, which can eliminate more than 99.9% .9 of microorganisms in the air. And I'm sure it wasn't easy for Singapore Airlines to get the permission to work it through with the ICA. So there are many things behind the scenes that had to be done to make this service possible. The airline has been impacted severely by the COVID-19 pandemic because it has only international flights. In its financial statement in July, Singapore Airlines said it suffered a net loss of 736 million US dollars in the first quarter of 2020 after a 99.5% plunge in passenger traffic due to the coronavirus pandemic. The airline plans to reduce crew size and its flight network in the next few years. But for now, these curious passengers are helping the company fly high while firmly on the ground. Karina Tasha for ASEAN Today. More ASEAN Today is coming up shortly. The priority of economic recovery. Regional summit leaders in the hot seat next. You're watching ASEAN Today, I'm Raisa Chintami in Jakarta. And I'm Ayn Bandial in Bandar Seri Begawan. Leaders of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum, or APEC, reiterated their commitment to pursuing free and open trade and investment in a mid-November gathering. They also discussed regional economic recovery from the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The first and most important priority is for us to reaffirm our support and commitment for the rules-based multilateral trading system. This is essential for our businesses as market stability and predictability are the central pillars which ensure that trade investment continue to flow even during times of crisis. These priorities are free and open trade and investment regional economic integration, as well as economic and technical cooperation. What has and will continue to evolve will be the need to view these priorities through a pair of COVID-19 lenses. Yatai是我们的共同家园，维护亚太和平稳定，促进发展繁荣，符合我们的共同利益。亚太各国既有人员密切往来之力。也有跨洋相望的地地之变 Tahun 2020 merupakan tahun yang sangat krusial bagi dunia, sangat sulit bagi dunia. Semua negara ditantang untuk memecahkan masalah yang tidak terduga sebelumnya, ditantang menjawab keterbatasan, menghitung kembali peluang, dan menciptakan terobosan dan inovasi yang tidak terpikirkan sebelumnya. Indonesia menggunakan momentum krisis ini untuk melakukan reformasi struktural secara extraordinary sehingga siap membuka pintu seluas-luasnya bagi bisnismen dan bagi investor dengan 
cara-cara baru. Beberapa minggu yang lalu, Indonesia telah mengesahkan Undang-Undang Omnibus Law Cipta Kerja. Pertama kali dilakukan penyederhanaan regulasi secara besar-besaran. Tujuan utama kami adalah menciptakan iklim berusaha dan investasi yang berkualitas bagi para pelaku bisnis, termasuk UMKM dan investor asing. Regulasi yang tumpang tindih dan prosedur yang rumit dipangkas. Rantai birokrasi perizinan yang berbelit-belit dipotong. Serta pungutan liar yang selama ini menghambat usaha dan investasi juga diberantas. Dengan tetap mengutamakan komitmen kami untuk perlindungan kepada lingkungan, komitmen ramah lingkungan. Now that it's situation is stabilizing, uh, we cannot continue this very, very large infusion of uh, government resources indefinitely, and we have gradually to tail this off and to get things onto a sustainable footing, which means that the businesses which are able to resume should resume, the businesses which need to transform or to pivot to a new orientation because it's a new normal and the old way of doing things won't work anymore. We will help you to do that. And for the few businesses which are likely to be in suspended animation for some time, mm. like tourism, travel, uh, then we will have to make special arrangements for them. Mm. But eventually this has to be sustainable and we, c we have to adapt ourselves to what is to come rather than freeze a position which reflected what was pre-COVID. Right. Otherwise, we'll end up with zombie companies and an unproductive economy, and I think that will lead to more trouble for us later on. Leaders identified three specific areas to be the forward focus. Commitment to multilateral trading systems, bolstering the digital economy, and inclusive economic growth. More ASEAN Today is coming up shortly. We go to Thailand. That's where political protests are creating family feuds. This is ASEAN Today. And we are coming to you this week from Jakarta and Bandar Seri Begawan. Ongoing political protests in Thailand have led to a new divide, a younger generation demanding democracy and an older generation trying to protect the monarchy. ASEAN Today's Fauzul Azim reports. The contentious issues of democracy versus the monarchy is pitting parents against children, causing divisions within some families. Bayou and his daughter, Proud, have plenty in common. But lately, they don't talk as much and see each other less often than they used to. Bayou misses his daughter, but politics has strained their relationship with high addressable exchanges, as neither take the stakes of modern politics lightly. <laughs> Proud stays follow a routine, hunch over a laptop, she scrolls through Facebook and Twitter to get the latest updates on the civil unrest erupting in the country. Because the 22-year-old believes in the protesters' cause, it has placed her at ideological odds with her parents. The relationship between my dad is, um, we fight a lot more, let's say. And sometimes the fight ended with to ignore each other. We just, you know, don't answer each other's messages. And several times, it's gone really badly. He would just say that, okay, I'm done. Like, I'm done with you. You're not my daughter anymore. In a country long disrupted by blood lip protest and punctuated by coups in the name of ending them, the past few months have been tens of thousands staking to the streets. A stanchion builds up once again between the establishment and those seeking change. For some, the battle on the streets continues around the dinner table. 
fracturing the family dynamic. There have been cases of parents kicking their children out of the family home and taking legal action against their own children. I never seen the gap this big. It's not just only the politics now, it's beyond on that. Then it makes a big gap between the generation right now. Although polarized politics is nothing new in Thailand, this latest episode has revealed a generational gap that is far more sensitive as it hits the country's most revered institutions and affects the basic societal unit, the family. Fauzul Azim for ASEAN Today. Here are several events on the ASEAN calendar. The annual River Kwai Bridge is set to take place from November 27th to December 6th in Kachanaburi, Thailand. Christians in ASEAN and around the world will celebrate Christmas on December 25th. And revel in bright lights and positive vibes as Singapore rings in the new year in the iconic Marina Bay District on December 31st. Passengers can now set sail from Singapore on a cruise ship to nowhere as the travel industry rebounds from the global pandemic. ASEAN Today's Aisha Nadira takes us on board. Ocean cruises were postponed in March following travel restrictions and serious COVID-19 outbreaks on board several ships. But the World Dream set sail from Singapore on October 13 with hundreds of passengers eager to go nowhere fast. With safety measures in place to prevent coronavirus outbreaks, the ship will make this voyage three times a week until the end of December, hoping to attract Singaporeans who are unable to travel abroad due to the pandemic. More than 6,000 inquiries came in after the voyages were introduced. Spaces for the first two voyages were solidly booked. Uh, I think all our crew uh, would actually got to tap in and out uh, into various locations that when they, they work. Uh, they also have to practice social distancing. I think in also in terms of cohort, they also be restricted. Uh, and every seven days, uh, all our crews will have to go through uh, antigen tests. We got training on this and we have various certification for this where we have two new certificates that is new for the cruise industry. First was the certification of infection control for maritime ships that we got by DMV GL, so we have to reach those qualifications. And the next was the Singaporean Cruise Safe Certificate. The ship is owned by Hong Kong company Dream Cruises and returns to Singapore after three days at the sea with no port calls. For safety, the ship only accepts half of its usual passenger volume, and all passengers must undergo COVID-19 testing before boarding and disembarking the ship. Every room and all public areas on the ship have been equipped with air circulation systems. Professional and medical grade disinfectants are used to clean the public areas. In addition, the cruise ship has also set up medical facilities for nucleic acid testing, as well as seven quarantine wards and 34 quarantine rooms. If any passenger is suspected of having COVID-19, he or she and their close contacts will be hosted in the quarantine rooms until the test results. But for most, minds floats far away from the pandemic on this cruise to nowhere. Aisha Nadira for ASEAN Today. We like hearing from you throughout the ASEAN region and the world. Lee posted this on our YouTube channel. I'm from Singapore. If not for this program, I would not have known of the catastrophic floods in Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, and the Philippines. Hope the floods will ease soon. Glad the info helps you, Lee. All of our episodes are posted on YouTube, so check us out there if you can't find us on your local TV channel. Then let us know what you're thinking about or what you want to see on the program. Email us at ASEANTODAYTV at gmail.com, post something on our Facebook page, or tweet us at, at ASEANTODAYTV. Malaysia's plans to export the latest version of its national car is gaining speed. That's right, Raisa. We're talking about the Proton X50. 
This model is now available for order here in Brunei, the first export market for Proton's latest SUV. It was introduced in October and offered in four models with two engine options. The basic version comes with four airbags, rear air conditioning, and an 8-inch infotainment system. We were also the first export market for the previous Proton model. And that's our Sian today for this week. I'm Ayn Bandel of The Scoop in Bandar Siri Begawan. And I'm Raisa Chintami of the Indonesia channel in Jakarta. Thank you for watching ASEAN today. Please join us again next time.